your video is about to play. But first, I wanted to tell you that the new edition of our book, Stunning Digital Photography, is out and ready. It has over 100 photography videos, totaling over 13 hours of video. You get free updates for life, so that means you never have to buy another photography book, and it comes with an optional online community with a lot of really great, helpful people. If you already have this book, sit tight. Your update will be in an email within the next week. And if you'd like to purchase it, it's only $9.99 for the ebook. You get all access to the videos and everything. And the paperback is $19.99. You can go to sdp.io slash store to get your copy. Thank you. Montana! Montana. So many landscape photographers spend thousands on an expensive camera and lens and never go further than their local park. You'll get better pictures by grabbing any cheap camera and spending the savings on a plane ticket someplace gorgeous. Chelsea, Madeline, and I grabbed our cameras and traveled 2,400 miles to Glacier National Park in Montana. We recorded some landscape tips for you along the way. That's a wet shoe and a very cold foot because that's what happens when you wade out into a beaver dam <laughs> to try to get the best angle. This is what I had to wade across to get to this other spot. But this angle is just very slightly better because you can see those sharp points at the top there. This spot is beautiful, and I want some of the foreground in as well as the background in focus. So I'm going to put my aperture as high as it will go, which is 22. Um, have a slower shutter speed, so I have more light. And I'm also shooting an HDR, because I don't have a perfect sky today. But I think that if I do some HDR work, I'll be able to bring up the detail in this, these cloudy skies. I'm gonna go off and try to find a spot with some moving water or something a little bit more interesting in the foreground. Flowers maybe. Oh, one more thing. I also put my shutter button on a two second delay because I noticed that just uh, pressing the shutter was making my pictures a little bit blurry from, from camera shape. If you have a camera with an electronic level, turn it on before you take a panorama and try to keep your camera level through the whole thing. That means less wasted pixels. I take a picture, then I move a few degrees to one side, take another picture, a few degrees. Be sure to stop moving between each picture. You don't want to just move in one smooth motion or you'll get blurry pictures. The way I see it, you have two choices when shooting waterfalls. Either use a fast shutter speed of say one one thousandth and freeze the action of the water to really show how vicious the waterfall is or do a shutter speed of a second or more and give that nice soft feathery look. So first I'll do a really fast shutter speed on this. Putting it into shutter priority mode and setting it to one one thousandth of a second. Makes me raise my ISO up. I'll put it on auto ISO so I don't have to worry about it. Make sure you have a nice and steady tripod and uh, helps to set a delay on the shutter. Two second delay is good, and that'll just stop you from shaking it. I like the whites of the waterfall to be nice and bright, but not blown out completely, so I always check the histogram, and I can see, oh, they're getting blown out a little bit, so I'm gonna do lower the exposure just a little. Here I'm tracing the line of the waterfall down into the corner, so it makes a nice, pretty look. Drop the exposure compensation down so the highlights aren't blown out. All right, so there's my shot at one three thousandth of a second. Now I'll go really low on the shutter speed, just as low as I can go. All right, I got one and a half seconds there. It's dark in here, so I don't need a uh, neutral density filter today. Hands off it while it shoots. Yeah, now just look how different these two pictures look. One captures the action, the other makes it seem nice and smooth. 
Shutter speed matters in video too. Compare this clip of the waterfall at 1 30th to this clip at 1 2000th. Avalanche Lake is so gorgeous. These trees form these lines that draw your attention right to the middle of the frame. And while well, you can shoot at wide angle and get those compositional elements, you can also zoom in tight and you'll see these just amazing waterfalls, just countless gorgeous waterfalls on top of this gorgeous composition. And they're just absolutely everywhere. This is one of the most gorgeous places I've ever been in the world. One of the hardest things about landscapes is showing scale because the mountains here are so vast. Fortunately, a couple of people stepped into the scene right in front of me and I could wait for them to leave, but I actually prefer them in the shot. In case it rains like it is now, bring a lens hood to keep your lens dry, a little dry. It's raining just a bit on the way back. Another rain tip, bring a plastic trash bag Landscape photographers often get stuck in unexpected weather without shelter, as we did on this day. Put your entire backpack into a trash bag, or even your weatherproofed gear could get ruined. One last tip, and I know it's not for everyone, but you can often find affordable helicopter tours that give you a bird's eye view. If the helicopter has a window you can poke your lens through, you'll get much better results than if you have to shoot through glass. If you travel to a spot for a week, don't expect to get Ansel Adams quality landscapes. Great landscape photographers spend years finding the best locations and angles and then waiting for the perfect weather and light. That makes landscape photography one of the most challenging types of photography to be great at. But I hope with these tips and the rest of chapter 9, you'll be able to capture the beauty that you do find. If you want more videos like that one, subscribe! And if you want SCP, I know you do! Go to scp.io store or to Amazon.